Okay. Our next question is from Robert. And his question is, when looking at today's church in light of the market-driven church phenomenon, can we say that God's people are just content with not dispersing, going into the world and help reclaim the nations? Can we compare how church folks are today with the disobedient people at the Tower of Babel? Well, I, you know, honestly, I think a lot of what's behind that question is really more applicable to the American church than the global church. I mean, we, we, we tend to have an insular view because, hey, this is where we live. Uh, you know, what we see going on in, in the name of, of Christianity uh, in our own context and subcontexts. And, yeah, you can look at the American church and say it's worldly, say it's not uh, doing what it, what it really should, you know, for the advance of the gospel. Again, a lot of that is very insular. You know, we, we can't possibly be aware of all the efforts that are occurring out there to spread the gospel. And there are a lot of them. But when we, when we expand our vision beyond again, the sort of consumeristic uh, American church or even the, the, the civilized Western church. We can broaden it that much. When you go into the third world, you go into the underground church in China, hey, they're, they're doing the job. They are doing the job there. And, you know, we ought not to presume because we can't see that and it's not our context that it's not happening. So it, people who, who know me and have heard me and, you know, read the blog and things like that, they, they know that I, I have bones to pick. Uh, with the American church, I do think it's worldly. But at the same time, a lot of what that church is supposed to do is still getting done largely through believers, individual believers just getting off their butts and doing stuff, and also uh, parachurch activities, parachurch industries. I mean, they, it, it doesn't take you very long, on, you know, if you're trolling the internet for, for this kind of thing, that people are just saying, look, my local body is just, you know, they're, they're, they're serving up pablum on a weekly basis. People aren't learning anything. They're not being challenged about the way they live. They're not being, you know, really challenged about speaking up for the Lord, either in terms of the gospel or, you know, just, just defending the character of God or the faith or whatever it is. And so people go out to the web and they, they find ways to do that. Or they take it upon themselves to just, you know, I, I'm going to do this. If, if Those of you who have read The Portent, uh, this is a subtext to that novel. Uh, I, I can't. I don't want to go too far off into it, but essentially, there there's some characters that have a conversation that's just like this. We just got tired of of playing church. We got tired of waiting for the church to do X, and we just decided to do stuff. We just decided to do what needed to be done, and that's just the end of the story. And so that is happening. Uh, it may not look organized. It may not be as detectable on a weekly basis as you'd like it to be, because. Again, you'd like to see vibrancy uh, in, in a local church context. Uh, and often what we see through the mass media about Christians is either the silliness and the worldliness that goes on in the church and not the other stuff. Uh, so I'm not going to deny that it's a problem. It is. But I think you know we can be a little more optimistic, too. So I think the analogy works a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's as severe of a situation as it was in Babel. Um, but I think that the point, you know, there's something to the point here.